My name is Paul Rick McDonough, but most people know me as P. In 2010, I suddenly lost my best friend, Steve Adams. He was also my trainer and founder of the Golden Team Gym. He was only 40 years old. I found myself taking over the gym and carrying on his legacy at 21 years old. Now more than 10 years later, I am now training his son Luke for his first Thai boxing fight. This is the Golden Team story. Do you feel privileged to have got to know him on such a level? Wow, the best, the best, the best person I've ever met in, ever in my life. I went through a rough time. I went through a very rough time when he died. Um, I mean, I was back in the gym on, on the Monday training fighters um, and, and trying, to, trying to do what, what I could. And I wanted to, I had so much inside me that I wanted to keep his legacy going. That that's why I'm here today. That is why I'm here today. And he taught me a lot about life and about being a man. He taught me a lot of funny stuff as well. You know, just just like the way of other character, just down to like not even it's just about life in general, about being a gentleman and being humble and being loyal. If I can leave a legacy, then I've I've God, you know, whatever happens later on in life, if I can leave that legacy, then I've done my job. And I think I've repaid Steve for everything that he did me. Owning Golden Team, it means everything to me. Just the place in general, uh, the atmosphere, the vibe, the whole thing about the gym, Golden Team, being a professional boxing trainer, Thai boxing trainer, coach, gym owner, everything the whole aspect of it means everything to me it's my life i've got it tattooed on my leg you know i wear it across my heart and it's got to really because i don't really know no else you know i can't even put a picture up never mind all else but the gym the gym and everything about the gym and the people in it is is my world luke and me i've got a very 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 similar relationship to me and his dad had um obviously i knew luke from being a little a baby really and um, coming in the gym and doing the kids class and stuff like that. What does it mean to you to be training him for his first fight? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Like you couldn't write it, you could you could not write it, could you? It's like some out of a film really, it's like we are in the same situation now that me and his dad were in. Do you know what I mean? We're in exactly the same situation. I'm going to be training him for his fights, I'm going to make him a champion and I'm going to do the best that I can for him in his life. How's Luke progressed since he started training? I'll be honest with you, he's progressed a lot faster and a lot better than I thought he would have. Um, and I think a lot of that is obviously, it's down to being in the gym 24-7. Obviously we're training, this is our first fight, we're still developing him as a fight, he's doing unbelievable. It's his first fight, you know, and he will only get better. And hopefully I can teach him and show him the right the right ways forward in in his Thai boxing life, progressing him as a fighter, progressing him as a trainer, progressing him as a person, progressing him as a role model and show him how to pull a few birds in the meantime. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I grew up in Seacroft, a council estate. Uh, it was one of the biggest council estates in Europe at one point. Seacroft it is what it is. It's my home. It's a, you know, it's a rough hole. Um, it's full of a lot of um, how can I put it? You know, a lot of wrong ones really. Um, but I'm very proud of being from there. Do you know what I mean? The street I grew up on were unbelievable. Um, my grandma, my ma, which everybody knows, my ma, my grandma in Seacroft were like, if you haven't been fed 
or slept in that house then you want really from Seacroft, you know what I mean? It's like, it's lived at Toppet Road, she fed everybody. But the estate in general were great, I had some great memories growing up. This is my mother's house, this is where I brought up and I lived. Uh, this is the, uh, the home of champions, my mother's the Queen of Seacroft. Every single person on this estate has been, look at her, she's there at the window. Look how gorgeous she is. That's our swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, that's where we go to swim. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so this is uh, my mum's hallway, the Hall of Fame. Uh, obviously here I won the British title, second British title that I won. Uh, I think I'm about 20 years old there. So this is my, me and my brother at Leeds Town Hall. Um, I mean obviously I treat all my fighters like this, we have a special bond. That's what my gym's about, the Golden Team Gym. It's about having a bond and having a family, you know, like a family feel. Um, but obviously this is a very special photo to me and it means a lot and this fight was a very very hard fight I've been involved in a lot a lot of fights a lot of fights you know and I always get a bit nervous for my fighters but when it's your family it's different again and I remember the guy was big for the weight and he was tough and I, and I knew it was going to be a hard fight and I sort of remember walking back in the second round and me out I pounded bam 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 and I thought I need to relax here, I need to relax. Anyways, he came on strong. It was a very close fight, it was a very tough fight. But he broke, he got his leg broke, but he finished to the end and he won the fight. He's got heart. And anyone in boxing or tie boxing, if you haven't got any of that under your sleeve, you might as well you might as well give it in because you can't teach heart. It's some of that's inside and you. I remember you saying to him, whatever you're doing, Mikey, don't go down. Don't go, don't down. go down, you can't go and down. You you're winning didn't. the fight and he listened he to didn't. me. But then um, a couple of months after this, he got stabbed, he got stabbed in the leg, you know, and it was a big gash, he lost a lot of blood. Um, and it was hard going to see your brother when he's got a big gaping wound in his leg, Re actually having the realisation of what goes on around these sort of estates and, and different estates and stuff like that. Uh, and it affected him in, in, a, in a harsh way, you know, and it, it ended his career really, do you know what I mean? His, his leg goes dead, it goes numb. And I think he still has flashbacks and stuff about it happening. Um, so the message is really it's like stay away from knives and stuff stay away from knives and weapons if you think you're a man or a boy or doing a boxing ring chain chain for eight weeks or you know you know do it correctly that's what I'm being a man's about you know put the knives down and, and crack on like like a real like a real man should this sort of sums uh, this side of my family up really so we've got my mum we've got Willie Paz Marie, Thomas, obviously myself, Mental Mick, my brother, my ma, Owen and TJ, um, you know, big Irish family. My ma came over to the country and, um, you know, she's, she's the, the heart of the family. She's brought us all up and, like I say, each and every one of us has had, you know, it's like if you look, they're all working men. It's no everybody's got a job. They're all they're all built their own their own fortune. Do you know? Obviously, my mum coming to the country on her own, and with my granddad who sadly passed away, drowned when he was 39 years old. My mum was left on her own. She brought she brought all the family up on her own, and for for the, all the people to be successful, it says a lot about my mum as a person. Mm -hmm. Today I'm so proud of them, I couldn't describe. I'm proud of them all because they're all, they're all good lads. Well, like obviously when I first started Thai boxing, I'd go to training for three hours on a night, you know, like after school, Steve would pick me up and I'd go, I'd go for training. So I wasn't really doing what other people were doing at that time of their life. I was, I was dedicating myself to Thai boxing. But yeah, we used to play football and um, and just just roam around the streets like rubber kids should, you know. Was it because you were scared of your grandma and didn't sort of go down the wrong path? Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't want to backhand her off her. Uh, I've got skinny legs, but her fucking calves are like that. And if she turns her left duck in on you, you're doomed, mate. <laughs> so obviously, this is where we'll gr we grew up as kids, this street. Proper street. Uh, I mean, look at Tesco trolley there. That brings back some belting memories. We used to, I think, the trolley from Tesco. We'd get the Tesco trolley from here and we'd all get in it. And one man, we'd all get in it cooped up like this. And we'd, 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 somebody would push us from there right to the end of the street. And the last person to break a bone were out. So that, 
you know, not breaking bones ain't fun, <laughs> you know what I mean, but it were having a laugh and being a bit wild and, and just, just out there really. So once you broke a bone you were out and you'd run back up with it and you'd go back down. Or we'd build bogies, you know, like little go-karts and, and go firing down in it or whatever, any mischief, you know, bit of garden hopping, a uh, bit of knock a door on. And then we play football for like eight hours on the backfield there, make dens and uh, and and then I'd go training for like three and a half hours on a night on ice cream. <laughs> well, that's the kind of upbringing in childhood that I, I think that that makes that makes you really. You understand that you know you don't have to have loads and loads and loads and loads of things in life to have a good life and appreciate the little things you make fun of with what you've got. Mm. So this is where we spent a lot of his time really having like we used to have a swing on that tree, see what that blue rope is. And then Ash fell off that actually and broke both his hands. <laughs> so before school I'd go out for a run, I'd do whatever run that I needed to do. And then I'd come in, I'd do my sprints up here. Obviously we went to loads of different places, we used to do a sprints at round the hills uh, majority, but when I was running on my own I'd, I'd come here. These were killers. In fact, we went down to show Charlie that a few times as well. But yeah, so I used to do his meals on here. I used to play a lot of football on there as well as a kid. Um, yeah, this is this is just what we knew. This is our estate. Started talking about how did you actually get into Moisat? Right, so it's quite a funny story, really. Um, my dad and Steve went to school together. Now, at this certain point in Steve's life, he was actually living at my dad's uh, because he'd had bin liners out. I don't know what he'd done wrong, but he were, uh, he were in doghouse and he was living at my dad's. So anyways, I went, I went, um, I went at my dad's one night and the next day I was going to the gym with him. I was showing him, showing him a bit of what I could do because I did a bit of kickboxing, did a tiny bit of boxing and stuff. And um, yeah, so it, he took me to the gym the next day and I always remember driving down the road and stuff and I was thinking, what the fuck is this music he's got on? So it's like, he's playing the Smiths. I used to always play the Smiths and I didn't have a clue they were. I've actually got them towered on my arm now, this charming man, but um, I went and I walked into the gym and like a dozy fucker, I tripped over the step and all kids started laughing at me. I thought, oh no, that's not a good start. So anyways, I did the kids class and he says to me, stay, do the adults class. So I'm fucked. He does, does the adults class and then he stays and he goes, do, do the, uh, the sparring. So I, I started sparring, I've never sparred before, and he were a giant, he just touched me on top of the head, and I remember falling through ropes. He didn't mean to do it, but he knocked me through the ropes, it was an accident. And at the end of this, Alex, I was feeling sick, and I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be sick, but I didn't want to show him. As I walked out of the, um, the boxing ring, one of my fondest memories was, um, he put his hand on my shoulder, and he says, you're going to be a champion, you and that just like inspired me from that day on. I just loved the sport. I just loved the sport. I loved him. I loved him. Do you know what I mean? He was like such a big role model and an idol. Like just just everything about him oozed confidence and just it, it was just an electrifying person. Um, but we was on his way home and I'm thinking, I feel sick as a dog here, sick as a dog. And he used to have this clapped out Astra where the gear stick never worked since the seatbelt had come off all the time, all the time. Anyways, we pulled up and I thought, I'm nearly home buzzing and I can be sick. I feel like I'm going to go here, I'm going to go. Anyways, he goes, I'm just going to go put a bet on. Fucking hell. So he goes and puts a bet on, it must have been about half an hour, 40 minutes and I'm wrenching in car like this. But yeah, that's, that's, me, that's my first memories of going to the gym. The first thing I wanted to do was fight. So I wanted to fight, so I trained for a fight and then I wanted to be on a poster. I oh, get on a poster and my picture on a poster. And then I thought, right, I'm doing all right at this. I think I could become a champion. And um, obviously I became two times British champion. You know, having a belt put around your waist was probably one of the best days in my life. But it made me believe that I could do that. It were a, it were a tough, hard, hard fight. The guy that was fighting a, d a couple of weeks before, I think he'd won some sort of European title and he'd fought out in China and stuff. He was no mug. He was a good kid. Anyways, it was a good, good close fight. It were hard. Things were getting tough in there. And as you know, you go back to the corner, you get a pep talk. So I probably had like maybe a 50-50 round with this kid. 
And as he comes back to the corner, sprays me, starts laughing how like he does. He goes, have a look at that fucking belt. Goes, look at that belt. Big, nice, shiny belt outside at ring, British title. He goes, look at that belt. He goes, he goes, you could be a champion. He goes, where are you from? Where are you? Where, the f where are you from? Come on. He said, look, your family's out there. Your mum's there. He says, come on, P. And he was, um, he says, where are you from? He goes, I goes, Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. He goes, yeah, we're from Leeds. And then just after there, just like, give me this, this pep talk. And he just blew me up. I just jumped out of the corner and I blitzed the kid. Absolutely blitzed him. And that's, that's probably one of my fondest memories where he got into my head and he made me win that fight. He gave me the right instructions and he gave me the inspiration in the corner to win the fight. Um, the funny, funny one, is, which it probably won't mind me saying now, but I think he'd had about three or four Guinness even before I went in ring. And um, I comes back to the corner. I says to Steve, what round is it? And he goes, a third? And anyway, I thought, third like that? I said, can't be the third round. Anyway, I looked at right and ring girl had number five up. <laughs> so between us, we didn't know what fucking round it was. But uh, I've, I've got loads of good memories in corner. Him, just him, he used to be that big. Like, you know, six foot eight, he used to have this little towel that he'd waff in your face, you know, to get you some air. But him waffing it, he was like that, you know what I mean? Like, it was like big air conditioning thing. But yeah, just uh, just him leaning over really and giving you instructions is what, what, I, what I remember. And um, just just going back to the corner, he'd always give me a cuddle and a kiss and you know what I mean? And yeah, we had a, we had a good bond and a good connection in the corner like you've got. So I wouldn't have earned anybody else ever in the corner. You know, he'd always get me up to do the demos and I just, I just improved and improved and improved and improved and all the time I was getting better and um, my name was getting bigger and um, yeah, it was, just, it was just such a good time like and it, it was always his dream to get this gym together well he, he, he sort of come to me and asked me if I wanted to be part of it with him he was my trainer, my idol, my role model and for him to ask me that it was just like made me want to get to where I wanted to be in my life I don't really think about the old gym anymore. I used to think about it when I first moved over to the new gym and uh, when Steve had just passed away. Now this gets me, this gets me big time like I've got a, got a mad feeling of putting another door through there. So basically Alex, we just have a boxing ring here, uh, mine over here, then over there we have it all cordoned off and we'd have all his weights. I'll be honest with you, it feels a bit smaller. I was going to say that. It feels a bit smaller. Here as well. And this is where we had the changing rooms. But yeah, we had some good, some good times in here. Some good, some good times. I remember when we opened it up, we had a big demonstration day where we did like, everyone had champagne and we did a demo and stuff. Do you want to say what today is quickly to the beginning oh, of the video? Oh, dream come true today. <laughs> so was your top then? <laughs> Are you glad that we went back? Yeah, yeah, I think I needed to, to be honest. I think I needed to. Every time I drive past it, there's not one time I don't look back and just remember, just look back at it. I always do. And, uh, do you know what I mean? Like when I went back and I seen the lead sticker on the door, I put a lump in my throat. I had two guys weighing in at Batley Frontier, two young lads. And my phone's going like mad and I get a phone call, Steve's not breathing. I'm like, Steve's not breathing? What do you mean Steve's not breathing? So I pulled him at gym. Anyways, he's, he's laid on his back and he's on the doorstep of the gym with people around him and a guy from York that used to train with us, Eddie, was trying to resuscitate him and give him mouth to mouth. But it was jit white and it was purple, do you know what I mean? And just, you, you, you sort of knew it wasn't happening but I mean, I don't know, you can't blame it on this, I don't know, but you know, the ambulance took a long time to come. There were a lot of people ringing him and stuff like that and um, I just, I felt scared at that, that point in time, do you know what I mean? I felt scared, it was like, like a shock. Um, there was a lot of people in the gym who was training, who was training at the time, so his classes were rammed, 30 odd people. His son were there, they had to bring Luke in at changing room while obviously we, we found what went on. Then I went in the, I went in the, um, 
the ambulance and stuff and they were working on him and um, I went into this, oh I've got a cold shiver, I went into this small room in the hospital, before I get there, I goes to the front desk, he had his wallet and because he lived at that many different <laughs> flats and he was not nailed down at one place, they were like where does he actually live, I, I don't fucking know, do you know what I mean, so anyways I goes in this room, I goes in this room and I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts, I knew, and this woman came in the room and she um, she came in the room and she told me that he wasn't going to make it and he'd passed away and initially obviously I broke down in tears, I was upset, I was crying but the first thing I did, which weirdly, I looked at the clock and it was two minutes past two on the 20th of November 2010 and I remember it to the day that I die um, and it was just an initial shock um, it, it was horrible, it was horrible, it was the worst stages of my life. I went in the next day, it was very hard because I went straight in the gym and I literally went straight back to work because I had this in my head where I want, I need to, I need this to work, I can't let this go. And I had people on me saying you can't let this go, you can't let this go. I, oh, hang on a minute here, I ain't got time to grieve. I didn't have time, I didn't have, not have time to grieve, trust me, I didn't have time to grieve, I did everything the wrong way. Um, I went straight in and his gloves were still there where he passed away, broke down in tears, I was my dad, do you know what I mean? His dad, my dad put my arm around me, consoled me and stuff like that and I kept going. I suffered, I found it really hard, I felt like I didn't have the time to grieve. One day I was driving to work and I had this crippling feeling through my chest. I thought, what, what is that? I didn't know what anxiety was. I'm happy go lucky, just have a laugh, just do what I want. And I had this crippling anxiety where I pull up and I thought, I'm, I'm, it's happening to me, what's happening to him? It's happening to me. And I, and I felt really weird, like I was going to pass out. Anyways, I didn't know what anxiety was. So I went on and I went on. I dealt with it all the wrong way. I dealt with it all the wrong way. Drinking, partying. And, and I can say that, I can say that to people because I want to help people, do you know what I mean? And that's, the, I did everything totally the wrong way. And when I look back, because when I was working at the gym and we, we created and built, I built, we had champions, we had champions in Thai boxing. I put a show on, you know, I looked around the corner of the show, we had a thousand people, seven fighters, seven wins, a British champion. And, and I thought, wow, I've done this. I couldn't believe it. But when I look back now in the state I actually was, I was like that. Drinking and partying and going out and doing everything wrong to blank it out. I was built like a Rizzler, do you know what I mean? Scandalous man. Um, but like, I did everything wrong and I look back now and I think, how did I do that in the state that I were in? I was down, I was depressed, I used to come home, I used to watch his DVD that we had, DVD of him, I used to dream about him all the time, all the time. And every time I dream about him was in the small gym, like that's where, that's where um, he was at his happiest. But when I dream about him, he'd come to me and I'd say, why, 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 why? And he'd disappear. It just disappeared, he'd never give me that. I, I couldn't understand, I couldn't figure it out. Why, why, why? They swim me dream, your dream's obviously uncontrollable, aren't they? I was thinking, why, why? And he'd just disappear, but he'd come to me all the time. And, um, and then as the years got, went on with my dreams, he'd come to me when I knows I was doing wrong and knows that I wasn't living my life right or doing wrong, and I'd know then. It's really strange. But going back to our war, yeah, I, I suffered that bad though one day that I was in the gym and I had this, this anxiety where, do you know the Simpsons where everyone's yellow? I was sat there and it was like everyone had turned yellow, it was so weird. And I rang my mum up and I said, Mum, I think there's fucking something over my brain or something here. I, can't, I don't know what is going on. And then I rang my dad up and I spoke to my dad and, I, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I went to see an anxiety, I went to see a counsellor. And the counsellor was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I went to see a private counsellor, I went to see this woman and she says that I had anxiety over his, his death and stuff like that. And we got to the bottom of stuff. You know, believe it or not, I only had about seven sessions, but that, that woman there was one person that probably saved my life because it was like everything had gone in a bubble and drifted off. It, it, it were, not everything, but 
if I've got any advice to give to people, if you're feeling like that, and go see someone and talk. I know it's a cliche now, but I'll talk and stuff like that. It's the best thing you can do, trust me. It helped me out millions. And then, then I started to really develop and the gym started to progress from there. If you ever seen Thai boxing today, you see how awesome he is. Wow, like a superstar would be to me, yeah, well, crazy. It's sort of like having a big brother at the gym, do you know, like he is now to be fair, do you know what I mean? But that's what, that's what I just used to mess about and always look after me and stuff like that. And I remember, I remember he'd take me about in his little Citroen C2 if we were going anywhere, with orange seats. What's he done for you? Too much that I couldn't pay him back. He just look, he's done loads for me. He has, he really has. Ever since my dad passed, anything. Fucking almost had to turn up at a minute. But um, it's, it's, I, I don't know, I just, he's done like everything you could do. He's just looked after me, made sure I'm, I'm sound, you know, I'm never going to struggle out like that, which is, you can't swim up more. I know my dad would be made up at that, mm. you know what I mean? And, I love Peter Pieces, my family, do you know what I mean? And I'll never, I don't think I'll ever be able to pay him back what, he do, what he's done and for my family and stuff like that, it's amazing. I think you're qualified <coughs> to answer this question, <coughs> which is if Steve could see yeah. you holding pads for his son, yeah. what do you think? Think about that. He'd be smiling from here to here, and he can see us. I know he can see us because I still dream about him. I know locals dream about him. We talk about him. You know, it was only probably four weeks ago we went up to his grave together. We had a chat for about an hour. We had a few cans of Guinness. We had a cry. We had a laugh. We had a cry. We had a laugh. We had a cry. We had a cry. We had a cry. We had a cry, and then we had a laugh and drank more Guinness and that was us and that's the bond we've got, we can do that and we're going to do it more, do you know what I mean and um, just, just, you know, it's it's where we just, we sort of, where we just went and we got away, do you know what I mean, but answering your question properly is, he would be absolutely over the moon, over the moon. But like, it's like, when I come here, obviously I know the camera's out, but I can say this without the camera being here, but it's like when I come here, it's like another inspiration, you know, just to not let it go. So that's what, like, this stuff is what will drive me now. I know it does. Every time I train, it always, this always comes to my mind, everything. Every time I do anything, this is all I think about. This is, this is the reason. This is the reason, the why. I, c I can't think of any better motivation, really. I think that's probably why I'm so strong-minded now. I've just changed. It's because I've realised what I want to do it for.
are something big, I tell you that now. Uh, I was nervous, to be honest, I was really nervous, but getting a bit emotional just to walk past and what legacy I'm trying to carry. I'm belly, you know what I mean? But I'm buzzing now, you know what I mean? But, uh, It's the world, it's the world. I mean, you've seen how many people were crying out there, including myself. I couldn't even get in the ring to congratulate him because I was fucking bawling my eyes out. Everyone in the arena, you won't be standing over here, 11 years on, he's just made a statement with a first round head kick KO. Uh, I've just had a promoter come straight over to me there, want him on his show. Listen, 11 years I've had this gym on my own. You know, I've had a lot of good lads around me who fucking helped me. Paul Lee, Gaz, Mark Lee, you know, Jez Tindall, you know, all the lads. I, I, I'd hate to miss anyone out, but, you know, Mara, all the Andy Loftus, all the fucking boys that stuck by me in the beginning, we're getting there now. We've got fucking four pros, all undefeated. Luke's just made a statement. It starts now. All my hard work and effort is fucking for now. All right, boom!